good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have this match that I had in the Alaska last night on stream. Those of you that saw the stream and saw this clip knows what's coming up next, and boy is it a it's a pretty good series of events, let me just say. So anyway, here's my commander build for the Alaska. And here is my module build for her as well. What's interesting to note, well, I do have Halsey on this, uh, on the Alaska. And what is interesting to note is this is the exact same commander that I use on the Puerto Rico and the Missouri. It's pretty much a standard survivability build. With, um, of course, Halsey's traits th thrown on on top of that, which you do either have to get a double strike or a confederate in order to activate. Uh, which I've done a total of, like, <laughs> twice. <laughs> because this commander normally just sits on my, my um, Puerto Rico or my Missouri, and getting double strikes in those ships doesn't happen too, too much. It did happen once in the Missouri, though. It was pretty pretty funny so wait the alaska she is the tier 9 american super cruiser the original american super cruiser and well the only american super cruiser at that except for the puerto rico but i don't really count that because that, that's not a ship you can even get anymore not even in santa containers and we all know how those are going anyway so the alaska has nine 305 millimeter guns they are some very, very lovely, lovely, lovely guns, especially since they have the American Super Cruiser AP. I'm sorry, the American Cruiser Super Heavy AP. That's what I meant to say. God, English is a hard language, is it not? Anyway, so these are the wonderful, wonderful guns that hit nice and hard, hit well above their weight class, and you will see some lovely examples of that in this replay. On top of that, she does have radar that can get out to 10 kilometers. It's that lovely American long-duration radar. Lasts much longer than the Soviet radar, which normally lasts anywhere from 15 to 12 seconds, depending upon which Soviet ship you're in. Her radar lasts just, I think, just under 30 seconds, or just over 25 seconds. I can't remember which one. I don't play with too many radar ships, so I don't remember their duration that much. I just know that the American cruisers normally last around 30 seconds, and that the Soviets last about 15 seconds, Petro lasts about 12 seconds. On top of that, she does have DFAA, or Hydroacoustic Search, I believe you can switch it to that. I keep DFAA on there because CVs. And of course she has a heal, which is very, very, very good. She is a tough little cruiser. She does take the occasional big hit like you're seeing right now. She does have pretty good armor, but it's not the same as the Puerto Rico, where she's almost nigh uncitadelable. She is citadelable fairly easy if you know where to aim, just above the waterline on her hull, with any of the battleship caliber guns, will net you a pretty juicy citadel if you hit in the right place, and of course if RNG just smiles upon you. But overall, she's a pretty tough little super cruiser. She rests right in the middle of the tanking the scale for the super cruisers. If you were to put like Stalingrad or Puerto Rico on one end and like Azuma on the other end, she's somewhere in the middle, leaning a little bit toward the the tanky side. So anyway, in this match right now, I've gone over to the western flank, which is, well, not the light flank nor the heavy flank for the enemy team, because if you notice, the enemy team's done a pretty even split, probably unintentionally. Well, while my team has gone for a heavy west flank and a pretty light east flank, if you look over on the minimap, you will see that the Missouri, the Alsace, and the Neptune are doing their best to run away from that enemy team that's pushing down from the D flank, and they did lose their DDs over on the eastern flank. So now they have absolutely no spotting, which sucks because the Neptune can't exactly spot because it's a Neptune and anything with slightly large guns like the Jean Bar sneezes in its general direction and it will explode. And of course the Missouri and I'll say, well, and speak of the devil. <laughs> uh, and now it's just the Missouri's and I'll say so over on the sea flank. We're already down by 250 odd points at this point. But over here on the western flank, we've got the Minnesota, the Donskoy, the Musashi, the Fletcher, the Jean Bar, and the Z-44. If you notice, the Z-44 is doing something a little sneaky right now. He's sneaking out of the A-cap and is making a mad dash for the B-cap, the Mad Lad. But that does leave us without any spotting over here at the A-cap. And the Fletcher, if you notice on the mini-map, is hiding behind an island currently. There he goes right now. 
I mean, he is down two thirds of his health, but he still has the ability to go and spot ships like the Jean Bar and the Lion for us. Now, there's a Kitakaze over here as well, but as we can see, he's in the A cap, so the Fletcher doesn't know where he's at now, so now he knows he's a little freer to go and run wild on the western side. <sighs> Speaking of sides, the eastern side has just been spotted again thanks to probably the uh, combination of the Alsace and the Z44. Ostagotland, Jean Bar, and the Fletcher are all still continuing to push heavy, 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 and the Missouri and, the, and Alsace are doing their best to run and kite away. Donsko is popping his radar just to confirm that the western side is free of DDs, although now the Fletcher is going to the cap to contest it with the Kitakaze. There's a Jean Bar. I don't know if this guy's a bot or if he disconnected, but he's just sitting there broadside on to myself, the Donskoy, the Minnesota, and the Musashi, and the Jean Bar. And broadside battleships are always nice and juicy. Ooh, we just lost the friendly Alsace down south to the enemy Jean Bar. And you can tell there, I thought he was kind of trying to bait us, so I aimed a little bit forward. Actually aimed at his number two turret. Turns out he is just sitting there, so the, my first shot's just ricocheted off the number two turret. Second shots, unfortunately, don't connect. Well, they connect, but they don't pin. Bit too far away, not enough velocity at that range for the shells to pin. If I ended a little bit higher, would either pin his superstructure or maybe even his deck. I'm a little bit further back now and aiming for that front conning tower superstructure there, but the shells go a little bit to the left and either miss or pin the upper be belt armor or overpin the belt armor too. Well, not the belt armor, probably over pin a bit of superstructure. Those shells miss RNGs. This is being very rude to me right now. Let's start to get shot. Oh, if you haven't noticed, our Fletcher did manage to survive. So that's good. Ah, and there's a Kitakazi. Pop my radar and get him spotted. Although I don't think I spotted him. I think maybe he popped out of the smoke for like a split second. Got spotted. Now the radar is keeping him spotted while he's in the smoke. So I cleared my tubes of AP and get HE loaded up. And I just tag him there on the stern, get 2600 damage through the pins to his stern. Loading HE now, and my radar is keeping him spotted. Now he's out of his smoke, and he has just collided with an island. And Fletcher is doing his best to pump him full of HE while he still can. Look at their rainbows going back and forth between the two. Now, when ships get stuck on islands, it really messes up your, um, your aiming system. It, I guess it's because it's trying to walk onto the island behind them or the island's interfering, but either way, it messes with the shots. But thankfully, he goes down. Now I have this armor right, right in front of me. This would be a pretty good shot here if I had AP loaded, but I was already loading up HE from fighting the Fletcher. Get away with that turn right there somehow, biting just 4k to the superstructure. Get my rear turret off, and that automatically begins the reloading process on the front two turrets to load AP. So, unfortunately, I don't get those two off. But I managed to fully get away with this turn by just eating 4k through the superstructure from the Iowa. That is very lucky. He could have easily just deleted me there if uh, he had held his shot for when I was fully turning. So now I'm thinking, well, we're losing by by a lot. We need to sink some ships. And if you notice on the mini-map, just north of the island that I am behind, the lion is bowing to me. And bow into the island. And it looks like he's not paying any me uh, me any mind. So I'm going to go give him a reason to, to pay me some mind. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Full on yellow rush in a half health Alaska. Versus a two thirds health lion. Now the lion did get her citadel raised a little while ago along the conquer. But she still has that super heal. So in order for me to get this lion out of action, I have to absolutely delete him from almost full health in, in Alaska, which isn't impossible to do, but if he has even like a thousand health left over, he can easily print back his ship. So full speed on, I've rotated my turret, so his number two turret got knocked out there. He's trying to rotate his guns, but he can't rotate them fast enough, get all three turrets lined up, and goodbye lion with four, uh, four citadels and four pins. So that worked out well. Now, that was, that was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I quite enjoyed the reaction that stream, that stream had to that. Now we have this Iowa, who's almost fully broadside to me, is ankled just a little bit, and is going slower than what I originally thought. So I just managed to slap him on the nose for 4K. And it was at this point that I realized that we were kind of boned. 
the Riga, Jean Bar, and, and Rune are all charging my team down south, which is just left of uh, Minnesota, Musashi, Donskoy, and Jean Bar. Now, our Chad Z44 did go try and cap D, but unfortunately, it looks like the uh, Ismo and the Ostagaltland are still hanging around there at D. Tries to go back to A, and looks like the enemy Alaska is chilling there. In, I'm sorry, he goes back to B, but the enemy Alaska is waiting there for him as well. So I know I need to buy some more time. Um, and I gotta take this Iowa on by myself. So, here we go. Fortunately, RNG blessed me with that salvo from the Iowa. It completely missed. It's also maneuvering, too. I think he expected me to continue to sell broadside onto him. Now, what is fortunate, too, is that the team in the back, the enemy team in the back, is so focused on taking down the Minnesota and Misashi, none of them are targeting me. Ah, Donsko gets the Austin Gauntman. I know this because I do have priority target on this commander, so I know there's only one ship aiming at me, which is the Iowa. So I know that I'm clear to just beeline at the Iowa and do as much damage as I can before I go down. So I swap one over to HG here because he's no longer showing me broadside, which is the correct call on his part. He needs to make a small target as he can out of himself. Ooh, and there goes Arjan Bar to an Ostagotland torpedo. So Z44 is now back in D after the uh, Ismo has left it, so that's good for us. That's going to be a pickup for us. And I get some HE going to the superstructure of the Iowa. Unfortunately, that was only 2100 damage. And his 1 and 2 turrets are faced to the left of his ship while I'm on his right-hand side. And plus, he just drove into an island. Not the best strategy there. I don't know what he was doing. All he had to do was keep running. He's has a similar top speed to me. I only have a 2-knot advantage over him, so he could have just kept running. And it's been a while since I before I could catch up to him. So, I get all three turrets off here. Well, I thought I did. Unfortunately, I didn't get the rear turret off. Get AP loaded in the tubes next. And I'm thinking, well, if his turrets are now on the right side of his ship, I'm faster than his rear turret. So, let's see if we can pull off this drive-by again on the Iowa. So, here we go. Get all three turrets aimed around. Pull up right next to him. Hello, Iowa. Goodbye, Iowa. With five citadels. Five hits and five citadels. What the heck missed at that range? <laughs> I'm just realizing that now, uh, watching this replay back, apparently um, four shells just went straight into the water. Because the, the, the ribbons, if you don't know, the ribbons that the hit ribbons, they're still the same ribbons as the uh, the citadel ribbon. So when it, says, when it shows five pins, those five pins were those five citadels. So apparently four shells just went into the water somewhere. I was aiming at the water line, so I guess that did happen. So I managed to get him out, and now I'm going to try Cap B by myself while the Musashi is contesting... The C, well, Ladon Skoy is dead now. While well, the Masashi contests the B, the uh, I'm sorry, the A cap. And, well, he's dead now too. So, needless to say, this doesn't end with a victory for my team, unfortunately. But it was a pretty good game, but really, really, really entertaining game um, for me and for you guys. I'm assuming that's why I'm sharing with you guys. So, just want to show with you guys, really fun game, not a huge comeback, not an amazing win or anything, just some, some pretty fun, funny moments I wanted to share with y'all. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 25,000 subs, and we just passed 20,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you enough for that. Unfortunately, I didn't grab the uh, end screens on stream, so I apologize for that, but I was number two on the team, and did what was it, 132,000 damage there at the end. So. Again, pretty nice game with Alaska. Netted a tiny bit of profit because it is, of course, a premium ship. And one of the few Tier 9 premiums I would recommend you buy, especially since this one is going away soon. However, you, of course, can just grind up the free XP you need to get her because you stop leaving until February of 2021. Have plenty of time to do that. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.